Shella, really? Well, come on, I'm filming. Hello my loves, welcome back to another video on my page. So today's video, if you can't tell by the title, is going to be about my foundation routine and how to make your face look absolutely flawless. There's many things to know about foundation that I'm just going to quickly talk about so you can pick out one of your own foundations. So the first thing is if you have dry skin, you're going to want a foundation that is dewy. This means the foundation is going to be more hydrating and a little bit more wet on your face. If you have oily skin, you want the opposite of this. You want something that is going to be matte or satin finish. This means it's going to help control the oil and it's going to give you more of a dry finish across the skin. There's also different coverage types. There is um, sheer, there is light, there's medium, and then there's full coverage. I prefer full coverage. In the video I will show you how to get full coverage. Besides the fact that I look like I got punched in the face because this lighting is absolutely horrible, um, I go into how to get absolute full coverage on your face, how to set it, application techniques, different types of products that I use, and I just show you all of my tips and tricks on how to get this foundation. Now on camera, it might look like that it looks like perfectly flawless and awesome on my skin. Um, there are days where I look cakey or patchy or disgusting. The camera hides a lot, so I promise everyone's not perfect. It's the camera. If you were sitting here in front of me, it would look a lot different, so just know that. So here is the foundation that I applied. I used Revlon Color Stay mixed with a little bit of Kat Von D. So if you want to see how I got this flawless face and do my foundation routine, just keep watching and you'll learn how to do it. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Hey guys, so I'm going to walk you through my everyday foundation routine. What I do when I start my foundation routine is I always moisturize my face. I love Cetaphil. I think I have eczema or something around my nose. And so moisturizers tend to irritate this so much. When I use Cetaphil, it doesn't hurt it because Cetaphil is for people who have skin issues and skin irritation issues. This one is the moisturizing cream for dry sensitive skin. It's a really thick formula so it's not runny and when it comes out, it comes out like this. That is about how much I use. I have clean hands. I have washed them because you want to make sure you're not spreading around bacteria and I just rub it between my fingers and I apply it first in my T-zones. And because I have also equally uh, dry under eye area, I use an under eye cream. This is the Exuvian's Hydrating Eye Complex. It comes in like a little jar like this. And I just take with my ring finger a little bit from the jar and I pat it on my under eye area. Because both of those products are really thick, you always want to make sure that your um, moisturizers have about five minutes to sink into your skin before you put anything on top of it. Okay, so the last step before foundation, now that I've let my um, moisturizer sit into my skin, we're going to prime our skin. So primer is going to ensure that your foundation lasts longer, it's going to help with any pores and fine lines, and it's going to help your foundation glide on a lot smoother across your face so you're not getting any patches or uneven application. I am going to put on my primer from Hard Candy. So the less the better is the trick honestly with primer because if you put too much on, it is just going to clog up your face and it's going to make you look cakey because this is a thick product. Um, so I have about a pea size amount and I'm going to smush it between my fingers and the first place I'm going to push it is right around my um, nose area because this is where I have the biggest pores and you just want to push it into the pores and then I do my chin and my forehead. You can push this evenly into the rest of your skin. After that, this is my favorite, favorite step. I love foundation. I can't get enough of foundation. I love full coverage. I love perfect skin. I love foundation. So what I like to do is I have this little palette right here. It's like a little mirror kind of palette. This is a makeup artistry palette. You can use anything. I often use the back of my hand you see in videos. Um, I just use this as a mixing medium and I'm just going to apply my foundation to it. I'm going to use the Revlon Color Stay. This is for normal dry skin. I'm just going to add in just a half a pump of my Kat Von D Locka Tattoo and this is in color M52. So there's a couple different methods. You can use a um, duo fiber brush, something like this. This is the Real Technique buffing brush. Or you can use um, a sponge, not a wedge, a makeup sponge, something like this. This is the Real Technique sponge. These ones you wet and they fluff up and then you kind of like wonk, 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 wonk all over your skin, you pat it in. Um, and then there is like the white wedge. So 
I prefer these two methods. They are most hygienic and they do not eat up most of your product. Because this is filled up with water as it is, it's not going to eat up a lot of your foundation, the makeup sponges. So there's like the Beauty Blender, there's this one. I only like those two. And then every other brand really has a knockoff of them. And they're also like a microfiber so that they're not absorbing any bacteria or putting bacteria on your face. And then brushes, these are synthetic. You want to use a synthetic brush, not a real haired brush, because these are going to to help apply a cream foundation much better. Bristles are coated so that they don't hold and harvest bacteria. A wedge, however, those do harvest bacteria and you're pushing that back into your skin. And it also eats up a lot of your makeup. And I've never really actually had a good application with that. So I prefer the um, brush. I do, and you guys have seen this, I like to apply the foundation straight to my skin and not on my brush at first. So I just pat it all over my skin, whack. And now I'm going to go in with my brush, and the first layer I'm going to buff out. So that is one layer of this um, foundation. I go in for two. So I'm going to zoom you in real close so you can see what one layer looks like. So you can still see spots through the makeup. That doesn't make me very happy. I don't like that. I like absolute full coverage. So I will go in for another one. For the second layer, I do dip my brush into my palette. I just kind of tap it and hardly pick up any product. And where I want extra coverage, which is going to be in my cheeks, on my forehead, and then right here along my jawline, I just press. This is called stippling not stipling, it is stippling, and it is just pushing the pigment directly into the spot so you're not shearing out the pigment. You're getting high amounts of pigment in that one area. Okay, so here is what this looks like. This is now my second application of stippling. So I've taken all the redness away. Of course, you can never take texture away, but I have taken all the redness away from my skin. The next thing I'll do is go on to concealer, and I use the Kat Von D Lock It Tattoo Concealer, and naughty, naughty Kat Von D, she did not put the color on the packaging. So I just take some out of the tube, and I run it in a V formation under my eye. And for this part, I really do like to use one of the sponges because I will just go underneath my eyes with this and it really helps spread out that product. And I will bring it over my eyes as well. After I've blended that out, I will move on to priming my eyes. I like to use my Avon primer and this one is in light beige. It's super thin. Looks like this. It's like a little pot as well. Just put a little bit on your finger and run it across your eye. From here I would do all of my eyeshadow and my eyeliner and then I will come back and do the rest of my face. The lighting is so bad right now. I just don't even want to film this. So I've finished my eye makeup and I look like now that I have a black eye in this lighting so that's always nice. Um, so what I do is after all of this foundation set in, I like to set my foundation. I like this um, NYX Mineral Veil Set It Don't Fret It Matte Finishing Powder. Um, mine is in light medium and it's just like a powder and I use what is in this cap and no more. I take like a big Eco Tools brush and tap some of it and I tap it in my T-zone. You can use any powder you want to set. Um, you can use one with a little bit of coverage like the, um, the MAC Studio Fix for a little bit of powder. This will give you just a little bit of extra coverage on your skin. And then to bronze up my skin, I use my um, Too Faced Chocolate Soleil bronzer even though it's crushed up in a bunch of bits. But I'll get that on a big brush and just start bronzing the sides of my face. So. Um, if you've watched any of my previous videos, you do like the E3. I bronze here, across the top of my head, 
and a little bit down my jawbone, whatever's left. And for a contour contour, like I said in my last video, you're going to take a gray tone. This is what you use to contour. So I'm going to take that on my Stila 24 brush. This goes right into the hollows. You want to do it in your tragus. And you're going to go no further than your pupil. It stays just right here. I bring mine up uh, just a little bit further than where my actual contour line is. And I blend it up, not down. Now, I already have really good facial structure in my bone structure. So I don't contour too much. I used to contour like a son of a gun though. Holy crap. I don't need to. I don't. For blush, I am going to use my... Um, MAC Mineralized Blush in Gentle. It looks like this. It's got, got a purple undertone to it. I smile, apply it to my apple on my cheek, and blend it back. One of my favorite highlighters is Soft and Gentle by MAC. It looks like this. It's a really shiny, looks like a sheen on the skin. And you put this on the high points of your skin. So on your cheek, on the highest point, almost right underneath your eye, I could bathe in this, I would, and bring it right around the brow in a little C. I bring some down the center of my nose, Cupid's bow. And just right here at the very bottom of my chin. And that way you just look nice and glowy and not like a dry Sahara Desert, even if you are. For my lips, I'm going to go in my with um, MAC Cream Sheen in Hot Gossip. It looks like this. It's kind of a deeper color. It's like a deeper pink berry color. 